Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Adventure Fit Radio. <laughs> <laughs> this week on our Shit the Shit episode, we actually had a deep and meaningful conversation about Sex at Dawn, which is a book that Bill has just finished reading and will probably read again for for uh, six month stints for the rest of his life, I believe. <laughs> and um, yeah, look, it's a really interesting book. Carl Porter, um, a, uh, a friend of the show, he uh, he just got it and um, and uh, is loving it, I believe. So you just want to say Carl Porter's name? Yeah, I just want to say Carl Porter's a friend of the show. <laughs> yeah, and um, and um, yeah, look, it talks about um, the ideas behind monogamy, um, polygamy, monogamy, Min- monogamy, <laughs> and. Um, and just the ways of why, you know, why a lot of, you know, uh, marriages don't end up working and, and, and maybe the evolutionary aspect as to why that is. But um, de- it's definitely a book I've got to read, hey? Yeah, it's good. It's mm. good. It's a good book. It's a pretty good chat. It was a pretty short one because we, yeah. um, we had a little chat in there in between um, other podcast uh, interviews we had a couple of weeks ago. So mm. hope you guys, uh, hope you guys like it. I like it. Um, we're sponsored like by it. we're sponsored by True Pride guys. Also oh, yeah. today, True Pride are a wealth creation service who work with ambitious individuals and families to take control, way less, and get ahead. If you're looking for a way to take control, way less, and get ahead when it comes to your finances, True Pride is a wealth coaching service for you. Oh yeah. Head to www.truepride.com.au forward slash advf and you'll get a two hundred and seventy nine two hundred ninety seven dollar joining fee waived when you uh, book a call with those guys. So what this is, guys, me and Tommy are both working with um, Craig from True Pride about crunching the numbers on our budgets. Okay, so budgets are a really ugly word. People mm. don't like to budget. They think that their quality Bougie. of life will, uh, will go down. So what it is, it's about keeping the same quality of life but actually saving you $150 a week. So that's $600 a month. It costs $90 a month to do this, 97 I think. Um, we're getting it for free. Cha-ching! <laughs> but... Um, Basically, it's about cutting away the fat, like um, uh, little bits of um, you can lose uh, lose up. You can cut off payments from this part of your mm. life. You can negotiate with this provider. Yeah. Craig gives you scripts for all this. It also uses a cash fit program that lets you see this is how much money I need for my budget for the week. This is how much money I use for fun for the week. And this is the excess. So it's fantastic. Money save for something or whatever. And it's on an actual program where you can look at it and itemize everything like... Um, it links up with your bank feeds. I don't know if that sounded... No, no, it does. Like it made any sense, I mean. No, no, it links up perfectly um, with your bank feeds, which I think is the best thing. And then what it does, it'll... Because um, you could do this, but you could do it the long way. And, you know, it, the budgets, is, it's, it's a tough thing to do. But the, the cash fit software program, when a, when you make a new transaction, when you buy or sell something, let's say I went down to the 7-Eleven and bought a pie, a sausage roll and a Big M, like I did last week, <laughs> <laughs> um, that'll go straight into the cash fit. And you'll have a look exactly where that ties in. So, with your with your food, with your um, fun, all this and that, and then you can you can set goals in there as well. Like I don't know if you've done that, Bill, but I've I've certainly set up a, a goal of repayments and holidays and stuff. And you can have a look at how much how much you know you're spending to uh, to take you forward to that goal or to to move you away. And it is so simple and good. Have you saved much money from it since? Uh, I've, I've saved money. Yeah, yeah, uh, I'm not that far into it. Uh, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not as far into Me it as Craig you are. Be working like a dude. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, anyway, guys, so head to www.truepride.com.au forward slash ADVF to, uh, to check out True Pride. We're also sponsored by Carve. So Carve are a company that, specializes, <coughs> company that specializes in anything digital from building apps, designing a logo, automating a business down to setting up your next event. Carve is the partner you want to be on your side when you want to focus on the things to scale your business. Get 10 free hours on any project by heading to carve.ph forward slash ADVF. So what that is, guys, Carver over in the Philippines, these are who I get my VAs. If you guys aren't aware of what a VA is, it's a virtual assistant. doesn't mean that it's a computer. It means it's a person, but they happen to work in a different country, so everything is done virtually. I suppose that's what it means. So I just hired my third assistant uh, three days ago, Aaron, and he's a fucking gangster. Um, so I've got Mon who runs uh, most of my most of my stuff, and Alvin runs the podcast. And so now we have Aaron as well, and literally... Everything that I have to do, whether it's so social media, um, we have a social media calendar, um, replying to info pack requests, um, getting exposure for our brand via getting myself on a bunch of podcasts, um, researching the trips, building itineraries, dealing with a website, dealing with a newsletter, dealing with a database. That's all done by my assistants mm. and it's all done 
at a cost of eight dollars an hour Australian, six bucks US, pretty much. Um, so these guys in the Philippines still earn a really good living, but it's just so epic. I've got my life back through Carve. So www.carve.ph forward slash ADVF if you want to check those guys out. If you have any questions about how it works, hit me up directly, doc at adventurefittravel.com. Um, and we're also brought to you by Adventure Fit Travel. Uh, Adventure Fit Travel is a fitness... Travel! <laughs> travel company for the fitness industry. <laughs> check us out at www.adventurefittravel.com. We just released Bali with Carl Paoli in April. That's gymnastics coach Carl Paoli in Bali in April and the Gilly Islands. Sickest trip ever last year. Everyone had a ball. So get on there and check that shit out. And Do you know I used to think his name was Carl Paleo? <laughs> which I thought was just a really positive coincidence. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, that's nice. Maybe you should change it. Maybe Carl there's more Paleo. people that think that. Or Paleo Paoli. Anyway, <laughs> here's the show. All right, sweet. We're recording. Mm. <laughs> so Bill, it, why, uh, why are you so tired, mate? Why am I so tired? Yeah. Um... Oh mate, I, I've I did a nice. um, I did a couple of um couple of little bits of um tradie work during the week and yep. then um helping a mate out and then since then the last three days or no <laughs> one day I think I did earlier in the week and then I've done um I've worked like I don't know fifteen hours I think I worked like fifteen hours yesterday fifteen hours yeah I worked day. seven till ten yeah pretty much I had I actually went and got a treatment off Jill so that's probably a lie it's probably like 13 uh, treatment but um <laughs> but uh yeah it was um I don't know I just feel like I um I had a couple of things that I've really been trying to work on with Adventure Fit and I've been real pumped and motivated about them but I get mm, sometimes I just get a little narrow sided and and I just go hell for leather and then mm. like the last couple of days have been really nice days and then it's gotten to the point where it's like 6 p.m. The sun's gone down and I look at the time and I look outside and I look at my book. Like that's my idea is always, fuck, it's a nice day. I'm going to yeah. go read outside, have some lunch outside or whatever. And then I'll look outside and I'll, I'll think, yeah, fuck. Like you just, I just don't even realize. I just put, put the music on and I'm cracking away and yep. making phone calls and having meetings and all this crap. And um, you miss... You miss, um, miss the whole day. Miss the day. So I'm, yep. I've started to get a little bit more strict with myself as in making sure that I give myself that little bit of time to do my own thing and mm. relax and stuff. Like yesterday before I went and got a treatment off Jill, I was just going so hell for leather from 7 a.m. till, and then I came back and worked till 10 last night. But yep. I was like, okay, the, 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 it was still light. I had a treatment at 5.20 and then I um, I took, I got a beanbag in the back of my car, an outdoor Two? beanbag. Yeah. It's normally on my deck. It's an outdoor beanbag. Oh, yeah, I know the beanbag. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, Is that the one with all the white stains all over it? Yeah, yeah, that's the one. <laughs> nice. And, then, um, and the brown ones. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I, um, you're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying like the beanbag. Sorry, stain was the wrong word. It's the, I mean, the, 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 the color shit of the beanbag it. is... It's got shit all over it. It's got no, shit all over it. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, what I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you just Not saying, just, yeah, that's, that's what right. I mean. That's right. So... <laughs> yeah. um, Nah, I took my beanbag and um, Supernatural, Graham Hancock, the book I'm reading. Yeah. I took my beanbag. I left like, um, I don't know, 40 minutes early to get down to Jill where, to where she works to get my treatment. And then, um, yeah, gave myself 40 minutes and went down to a park in St. Kilda on okay. the beach there, like yep. whatever that Ackland Street Park is. Oh. No, not Ackland Street. You mean just one. opposite not, Luna Park? No, 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 not Ackland Street. Oh. Um, end of Fitzroy Street. Oh. You, you know, mean one just of the big massive palm trees? Just opposite Luna Park. Nah, <laughs> not that one. I have no idea where you're going. Yeah, anyway, it was just like this sick park on the beach in St. Kilda. Took my beanbag down there. Mm. I've got this habit now of getting my... I've only done it two or three times because it was always just out of my back, on my back deck. Yeah. But I get my beanbag. I literally chuck it over like a Santa sack, <laughs> chuck it over my shoulder, carry it well, across the road, got my book in my hand and a beer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and um, people just look at me weird, but yeah. I, pr- I um, whack it on the ground, put it up next to like the um, the... A tree, like a massive tree, yeah. and kick my legs up on a tree, re- lean back and read my book. Well, it's like it's fucking glorious, man. This is fuck with holding like a shit stained beanbag. <laughs> 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 like, uh, look at him. <laughs> yeah, so oh, that's good. So I try and um, yeah, it's just been uh, I'm pretty I'm pretty zapped though. I've had it just a big week, and then, but um, yeah, if I if I'm getting that stuff in, if I'm getting a little bit of training, and I'm getting my um, bit of good time. Yeah, but I'm not. I haven't really been getting any any much um, 
much real you time, but I've been trying to start the day with some reading so I get a bit of an early win with all the other stuff that I do. So, And you're still doing the cold showers? Yeah, cold showers, uh, cold shower, gratitude journal, meditate, mm. read. Yep. I've added reading. And if I can get like, um, I'm just trying to go to bed earlier. It's hard though. Yeah, yeah. It's really hard because it's just, it takes, I just love staying up late and watching movies oh, and, mate. you know, like, because Jill, does, Jill doesn't finish work till eight and I'll normally work up until that point. And then you want to like, you want to have a chat, have some out. food, watch a movie or like watch some TV or whatever. Yep. You can't really, if you want to get up at five, you have to, you have to go to bed fucking early. Oh mate. And especially if you don't have a choice. So that's your, I that's your thing, eh? Yeah. I don't even know what that means, but that's what, <laughs> that's what I am. <laughs> oh, look, I love it. But, um, oh, just the, uh. You love it, do you? Oh yeah. I love you don't it. love it at all. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> no, I love, I love getting up in the morning. Going straight into a cold shower, and I'm up to I'm up to about ten minutes now. I timed it yesterday. Really, ten minutes in the cold shower. Why Mate, so long? The uh, the shrinkage of the Hatzmanalov <laughs> is uh, is more than apparent. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's rid- and then it gets rid- colder in the, sh- in the cold shower. Yeah, it's, it's a lot colder. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, but I like the idea of just waking up early. Waking being- up early. <laughs> I actually think you just said I like the idea of wanking up early. <laughs> I don't mind it. I don't mind it. But um, waking, 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 waking up. Yeah, right. Waking up early after I've had a good eight hours sleep, of which I haven't had in about fourteen thousand years. <laughs> and then um, back when I was twenty three. <laughs> yeah. And then um, yeah, and then having a productive day from there, it's good. But if I can get like a little nap in during the day, I'm sweet. Really? You know, yeah. So what, when do you when do you get your nap? I sleep at work. Do you? I literally sleep <laughs> in the back room of Schwartz's You're next to Benji Schwartz. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's weird, We, we just cuddle up together. That is real weird. Me and Benny. Yeah, just cuddle. Okay. <laughs> um, so you, what, you actually just go and get a little 15 minute power Yeah, there's in. like a little, um, Kizza actually got me onto this and there's like a little room in the, in the back end of the, uh, next to the office and it's got this unbelievable couch and I was just, um, I had a couple of hours before work and I was just um, hanging there for a bit. Next thing you know, I've fallen asleep. It's, you know, three hours have gone and I'm, I'm starting work in five minutes and I feel so refreshed. And there was a little blanket on me as well. Mm. You know, it's... Uh, yeah. <laughs> Waking sounds, up early. Sounds, uh, <laughs> sounds good, mate. Oh, mate. Yeah. So, uh, you been on any dates lately? How's the love life going? Love life's going well. My tally is 493,000 now. Oh, what's that? Um, I've just obviously people have plugged. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a terrible gag. <laughs> it's a terrible gag. Oh, it's not funny at all. <laughs> Um, so four hundred ninety three thousand six hundred and sixty six. Forty. Yeah. Uh, uh, how do you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you were no, well, no. you, you the last one. So um, in all uh, in all seriousness, though, are you seeing that chick still? Uh yeah. Uh, oh, which one? Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, nah, look. Um, <laughs> this podcast has been garbage so far. <laughs> the absolute kaboots. <laughs> yeah. No. Look, I um, I don't know. I had an, an epiphany. What I've do you mean? Epiphany. I've had a puffinal. Okay, what is it? <laughs> I, um, I've just um, look. I'm uh, I'm much more keen to just just think about the, the positive things in my life. <laughs> <laughs> so you want to stay? You want to stay off the topic of uh, of women? Do you, you want to nah, stay clear I'm of that not topic, off the, the topic on the podcast? Of, uh, women, women. I'm just um, I don't know. I'm just I'm very keen to just take a step back. And what do just, you mean? What well, are you talking like, about? Look, all right. <laughs> Tell us what you're really saying. Well, I'm just I'm just trying to say that. Um, uh, the, so the last, um, I think it just sort of I can't even remember how it ended or anything. But it was like I've been seeing her for a while, mm. and then um, still cool, I'm still sort of seeing her and this and that. Mm. But um, by seeing you, obviously mean <laughs> <laughs> waking up every morning and having a cold shower. <laughs> uh, yeah, go on. <laughs> um, but I just feel like I'm just I just want to focus way more on my training and on it, on on the radio and on other things. Like I want to. Just focus more on myself, mm-hmm. and um, I just can't be, oh, you know, can't be fucked. Nah. can't be fucked with the old, uh, nah. the old women. Yeah, well, I mean, I can, I obviously can. I mean, I love them. I love them. I love to hate them. Old women. <laughs> <laughs> um, you are throwing me into a deep. <laughs> oh, yeah, so, it's good. Uh, all right, so yeah. yeah, cool. That's fair enough. Try I, to try I to. I went through. Uh, I went through. On, yeah, I went through heaps of stages like that. Yeah, yeah. When I was uh, when I was your age, I had a missus who was. Um, it was great, and mm-hmm. I threw that away and travelled because I wanted yeah. to do my own thing. So I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I just feel that there's a lot of um, things going on in my life right now that I'm I'm really excited about. You're still dating chicks and stuff, though. Oh right? yeah, absolutely. Or yeah. or are you just you just can't be bothered with that either. No, nah, look, I'm I'm <laughs> definitely still doing that. Come on, <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but um, I just I don't know. I'm not 
I don't know. I'm just focusing on the other stuff, you know? Like, okay. the radio's going well. Mm. I'm excited about the radio. Mm. And uh, I'm excited about my training as well and my new job mm-hmm. and my new car and my new fucking house. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's great. Well, let's be honest. Yeah. Mm. No, nah, it's good. Me and, me and uh, the old man have moved in together. The old mm. bachelor pad. That's the old good. Ahern, How's the old beans. man go? He's good. Oh, with, he- with girls. Yeah, is he? Is he? Does he get around it at all? Or? I just get around it. <laughs> Who'll be listening to the show? Because so. um, my man's, uh, my parents are recently, uh, recently divorcee, recently divorced. But mm. you were saying your old man, he he struggles a little bit. He's he's pretty. He might be no, he doesn't struggle himself a bit. Or? He, no, he doesn't struggle at all. He's just very um. Because he doesn't have a, he does he doesn't have a new partner or no he doesn't have a new partner. But he's yeah. he's just he's actually he's just really focused on um on um doing the things in life right now. He's actually got a beautiful mindset. It's a thing of like, I'm making myself really happy right now. And if that comes along, then, then it, that comes along. But I'm mm-hmm. not trying to pursue it by any means, you know? Right. And he's um he's, he's a really, really happy dude. Mm-hmm. Like a really happy guy. Um, So yeah, if there are any girls out there, let's, uh, <laughs> let's get the old, uh, the old man into it. He's a champion. <laughs> Lovely guy. Loves long walks on the beach and getting caught in the rain. When did you, uh, when did your oldie split up? Ooh, I'm going to split up. Five years ago, yeah, right. Five years ago, yeah. And what five. did you think of the whole thing? Um, oh, look. Obviously, at the time, it was relatively, relatively rough. But um, it's the best thing that's ever happened. You know, mm. like they're just everyone's super close now. My mum's getting married tomorrow. Really? Yeah. Tomorrow? Yeah. Actually, tomorrow. Yeah. Really? Literally getting married. Tomorrow. That's insane. I know. That was I'm gonna re- be my next question. Like, oh, right. how, how well, did your old lady end up out of it all? Like, yeah. Obviously, well, pretty mum, well. Um, well, so the whole family now is just awesome. You know, we've um, we're all best mates. There's not really a a a, a parent and a and a parent son or a parent and a, a daughter. Yeah, exactly. We're we're all just best mates now. And every time we hang out with each other, it's just four best mates, mm-hmm. which is fantastic. Um, what your old man and your old lady are best like mates? That? Really, best mates. Yep. Really, because they just fell out of love. Hmm. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. That's a is that what you're saying? What happened with your parents? Um, nah, they, they're not, definitely not best mates. They don't really talk at all. all right. But, um, for us, for, for our family, it was like, um, Jack, I could tell Jack always wanted to have mum and dad stay together. Yep. Because, um, he especially, he, he didn't see like all the real rough, like mm. crap that they went through when he wasn't born yet. Mm. Like when I was really young mm. and then I saw all that. So... I kind of knew. I, I felt like I knew that it was it was too far gone. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was too far gone. To literally, I'm thirty. It was too far gone twenty years ago. Mm. Took ten years, ten years of my life of of shit, and then mm. they kind of were civilish to each other for the last fifteen twenty years. It feels yep. like they still have big fights, but fifteen twenty years civil, but just loveless and like just just didn't like being around each other at all. So I've got a question for you. Um, yeah. Do you feel like they stayed together for the sake of you and Jack? Yeah, and I always told them not to. Yeah. Because yeah. mum, mum and dad always used to, um, dad not so much. I knew that it was all going to, uh, that the relationship was going to end when dad would ask me, mm. dad asked me once about if him and mum split up, like oh, what yeah. I would think. And he yeah. was never, he'd never talked to me about that shit. Yeah. You know? So when he asked me about it at one point when I was talking to my mum about it and stuff, he asked me about my opinion and I knew, all right, this is probably yeah, it's serious, on. you know, it's, gonna, it's probably going to happen. But- that all happened because, um, yeah, it was just a loveless marriage, yeah. and and for so long because my mum, because the the situation with me, and my brother is my brother's eight years younger than me, so the whole way through, like Jack's twenty two now, so mm. like he's probably at a stage where he's mature enough for to really discuss these kind, type of things with mum. But yep. you know, mum and dad have been broke uh, broken up for a couple of years. You know, he was just a kid, mm. so he never. I think I have always, even right now, like they're going through splitting everything up. I'm every week, like I get frustrated sometimes and like drags me down a bit because I'm on the phone working out how much money my mum should try should, should try and get, what she should invest it in, doing this and that. Like I'm her financial life, everything yep. like kind of guidance. Life coach. Kind of. And um, or just like a sounding board, you know? Yeah. And um, But even when I was little, it was like that. And um, mm. I, she would ask me about like they would have the biggest fights. It's funny because I mm. can't imagine having fights like that. I've never yeah, had. Yeah. Me and Jill haven't. You know, we've been together six or seven months. We haven't raised our voices to each other. Like back in the day, like when I was younger with uh, with relationships, I'd have little, you know, fights. But it was like, whoa, these looking back at them, they were massive fights. Yeah, yeah. Never anything physical, obviously, no way. But so they'll be in little little tiffs. Little oh, they were just like abusive, Tiffany's. like verbally, like man, you wouldn't want big sessions. Yeah, it was crazy. Yep. And 
my mum would always ask me, um, you know, she'd say that she was splitting up with dad and, and I'd be like, yeah, that's good. That's for the best. And they'd get back together. And mum would always ask me when they were going, when they were together, but they were going really rough. She would ask me what my thoughts on the whole things were. And I would say, I love you. I love dad, but you guys need to break up. 100%. Like, so this is, um, this is interesting. Now. I'm really interested. Um, Carl Porter, our mate, <laughs> our best mate. No, we had him on the show. He's a good dude. Um, <laughs> He, uh, he just uploaded a photo of him reading Sex at Dawn. Mm. You've read Sex at Dawn. Can you touch on some, some stuff in that? Um, yeah, I actually um, to I messaged Carl the other day and because um, he's now, he's going to be an event fit coach next yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. And I asked him about Sex at Dawn. I'm like, mate, have you been reading Sex at Dawn? He's like, oh, bro, I haven't even picked it up. I said, mate, you've Get got it. it. I said, that's... One of the most eye-opening books you'll yep. ever read. So I reckon that was what spurred him on to get it get it up. Right. I saw him do a little um, Snapchat or something Spiel, about yeah. uh, the Insta Snapchat thing. Um, yeah, Sex at Dawn. Um, Sex at Dawn is a book that discusses um, evolutionary biology in terms of why we mate, why we uh, why we have monogamous relationships, why we have polygamous why we relationships. Have monogamous relationships. Well, the the benefits of monogamous relationships, how right. it came about, um, what, and then. So, basically, it goes into the history of um, of all the primate families yep. and all different tribes around the world as well. So, like, of the human family, yep. basically. So, and um, it's a really interesting read. I'm not going to do it any justice whatsoever because I'm not smart enough to explain it as well as I would like. But, basically, and I'm not against monogamy. It's just a really interesting, interesting um, thought process process you know so yeah you look at how many people are getting divorces these days one um, in two yeah that's right it's like it's like what's the chance more than one in two what, what are they oh, whatever the voice um, i think it's more than one in two yeah yeah so it's um it show look it, all, all the book does is it paints an interesting picture to think about because there's a lot of different so people say um that we're oh, um, evolutionary biologists obviously put us with chimpanzees uh, everyone says chimpanzees, always chimpanzees, chimpanzees, especially yeah. when they're talking about sexual references. Yeah. So chimpanzees, it's like very violent. Um, there's lots of like rape and it's, oh, it's really? not... Yeah, kind of. Yeah. And, um, and it's not a very... You, you don't want to be... You don't want to be acting like sexually like the chimpanzees chim- do yep. basically. But nobody talks about the fact that we're equally as closely related to the bonobos. So yeah. um, as far as like gorillas and orangutans, like we're nowhere near those guys. No. But chimps and bonobos, we're like... We're closer than an African elephant and an Indian elephant. Mm-hmm. We're, we're, we're genetically closer than those two. You look at an elephant and you look at a um, – from India, you look at an elephant from Africa, mm. you're like, that's the same animal. Yep. Well, evolutionarily, we're the same as bonobos and chimps or yeah, closer, right. closer than those two species. Right. So um, – but it looks at the, the patterns of, um, of bonobos. So – Bonobo societies is a polygamous society, I believe. So if I've, I'm probably going to butcher parts of this to the listeners and stuff. So don't yep. don't, don't shoot me down on, on whatever. But um, but the fact is, um, bonobos have polygamous relationships. So obviously, um, many different sexual partners, um, and it's a very very um, very happy community. So everything, mm. there's there's never any um, aggression, never any conflicts, never any. Or when I say never, I mean much lesser yep. degree. Um, and yeah, so it also goes. So the book also goes on to talk about the fact that uh, there's a lot of societies, even in humanity, that are polygamous, and there are also um, a lot of a lot of communities that are that are communal. So so basically, like there's indigenous tribes, and I can't quite remember exactly where on the planet but there's indigenous tribes that what they will do is a woman will have many sexual partners yep at some point she's going to get impregnated by one of those sexual partners yep she's going to have a kid and then the kid is a child of the tribe so once that child is born the child isn't the the son or daughter of mary and tom yeah she isn't even the daughter of mary so, so oh, really? the the woman will know. The woman will know. Yeah, this I gave birth to probably that kid. Yeah. she'll know that, but she'll treat them no differently than she treats the child of uh, her neighbour that lives six miles down really? the road. Or not six miles, uh, six hundred metres down the road. Yeah, yeah. So, so basically, um, yeah. So the, the child is is thought to have been um, a communal child, and it's raised by the group. So that way, um, it's also really good for um, for the children because if 
the fathers, if the fathers are um, killed in in warfare or hunting or something like this, then his closest um, closest ancestors, like his brothers and his uncles, they're all there and they're yeah, all yeah. raising him like a son or do- like a, like they would raise a son or daughter anyway. So um, the book goes on to talk about about just so many of the of the things that we mm. take for granted as mm. this is what human humanity and um, this is what the way we're supposed to be. Yeah, and they are uh, married and. Monogamous, and I'm not saying this because I'm a dude, and because you know the typical the typical aspect of of the way that gets talked about is guys want to fuck lots of chicks. Yeah, blah, exactly. Blah, blah. That's yeah, how yeah. that's how they look at it. Yeah. But um, evolutionarily, it's there's a lot of benefits to lots of different ways that society is run, and yep. just be, because the Catholic Church and the Western world, and and basically the way that uh, the way that it's we've evolved, then then um, it looks then then in our well, society it's it looks like that's the 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 only way to go yeah and it's just um look that's that's basically I, I i could go on about it and do and butcher many more parts of it but it's probably the most interesting thing that i've ever read only because it just it it calls and the books the book's not just about obviously um it, it's more of an evolutionary biology book so and it kind of Talks about the what gave rise to agriculture and, and societies and stuff, mm-hmm. and as far as um, yeah, it just it evolutionally explains a lot of things. But you have to look at it. I mean, at, it's not working our society. Well, in terms of in terms of this sort of stuff, like you know, marriage, more than one in two people get divorced. Like it, it doesn't mm, make much sense to me. And I'm obviously mm, only you know very young and not you know very well versed or experienced in that field because I've never been mad or anything but um, it it doesn't make much sense to me that you, you would unless you because you can you can you can be let's say you and I were writing to each other and we decided right now hey let's get married that's good except, yeah. except you and I we're super into meditation and staying present and all that sort of stuff making a, a life commitment is goes against a lot of that and I you know mm, I, why so well alright right now I'm I'm currently in this moment I'm I'm um I'm talking on the podcast I'm enjoying my time right now you know it's really good yep. fun I don't even know if I could be I don't I don't know what I'll be doing in five years time because five years ago I wanted to be a fucking AFL player mm. you know and uh, who's to say in five years let alone fifty or sixty years that I want to stay with you in this in this um scenario you know yep so is that is that some of the stuff that the book talks about, talks about or? um yeah maybe it might it might touch on it might touch on a little bit of that so uh, do they have do some of these these polygamous societies do they have um exclusive relationships throughout their existence or uh so there's a lot of there's a lot of different um animals around the world that'll have monogamous relationships until a child is born and then they'll go their separate ways yeah obviously um that's childbearing is for my uh, from for my from my perspective, why we are here, and and for a lot of other um, species on the planet, it's, it's really also popular. it's why why we are here, and so. But um, what was the question? I've just gone off topic. No, hang on. That, that's actually really interesting, though. I want to touch on something there. You know how um, we were saying before with your your parents, how maybe a lot of the reason they said together is for the kids. Mm. When a child is born into the community, there's there's that that is completely eradicated, isn't there? Because there's no need for the parents to stay together if they're not working. Yeah, that's well, that, right. That's a very that's a very interesting thing. Yeah, and another another one of the um, another one of the things that they highlight in the book is the fact that um, a lot of these societies, so a lot of these societies will be um, matriarchal societies. Mm. So the the mothers will uh, well, mothers the women the women will make the decisions. Basically, the women will be um, tribal leaders and and will make uh, yeah. decisions for the tribe. The men will still act like men, and they'll go out and do um, hunting and and labor and hard yep. labor. But a lot of these, uh, but there's very, very little, few, if any, wars and conflicts when it's a um, when it's a matriarchal society, yeah. rather than a patriarchal society. Because yeah. dudes are just so egg-headed and oh, yeah. idiotic, and you aggressive know, get and- aggressive and and so forth because oh, yeah. of all their testosterone and, and whatever. Yep. But um, but yeah, I mean, for me, I don't particularly think that. Um, I don't particularly think that marriage, the the concept of marriage, doesn't work. I just think. Uh, I just think that as my girlfriend walks past, Jill, Jill's just gone to work. Hey, babe. I don't really believe in relationships. And, uh... <laughs> so, yeah. Um, 
So, and then... Uh, she just walked out of my room. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I just think... I don't think that it doesn't work. I just think society's got a lot of problems and uh, yeah. there's a lot of things that we could fix. And the, the thing that the biggest takeaway for me from the book was, again, not that, it didn't, that um, monogamy and marriage doesn't work, but that there's a lot of other options. Mm, exactly. So, the authors of the book... Uh, the authors of the book, Casilda Jetha, I think her name is, I think it's Casilda. Casilda. Uh, and and, and, um, and um, Christopher Ryan. Yep. They live in a polygamous relationship. Do they really? Yeah, yeah. So, really? Wow. Yeah, so. Um, and the only reason I'm reacting like that is because it's not the social norm. If it was the social norm, I'd be like, ah. Oh. Well, see, I think marriage is great. Like, you look at, um, you look at, what's the movie with Ryan Gosling? Uh, there's and a few. The, the Crazy one, Stupid Love. No, 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 no. The one with. Um, Driver. <laughs> the Notebook. Yeah, The Notebook. Yeah, yeah. The Notebook. Mate, classic. Like, you look at The Notebook. Did you that, cry at the end of that? Oh, every time. How sad I is it? Fucking bormous. Which part did you cry at? Um, when they... When they both died in the same bed? Yeah, but also <laughs> when um, when she passes out, when she sees the when she sees the oh, house in the paper, oh, and she passes out. Oh, <laughs> oh I don't know if I sad. cried then, but I was like, oh, yeah! Yes. <laughs> 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 um, Mate, how good is she? Yeah, she's good, Rachel oh. Callum. She's really cute. But, um, so... You look at the notebook. That's like, oh, that's where that's where you want to get to. Yeah. You know, you want to uh, ideally, like, yeah. if everything works, then. But it's a movie. Yeah, it's a movie. You look but at that Avatar happens and in go, real I life. Get there. Yeah, <laughs> true. <laughs> but but it is. But it happens in real life. We ca- we're not going to say that it doesn't happen in real life. What two people falling in love and living happily ever after? Yeah. Do you reckon? What do you mean? I don't reckon it does. <laughs> oh, mate, that's for sure. <laughs> nah, hundred percent. People, I've seen people tons grow and tons together. Of people. people grow together. But they don't just live happily ever after oh, in a I think fucking castle I with think Snow White and some bear sure. corner. <laughs> I think they do for sure. Do really? I, I, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, if you're fifty-five years old and um, and you're settled down with someone, and yeah, maybe it's not as exciting as it used to be. Yeah. Maybe the sparks aren't there. Maybe you get a little pissed off at each other. Maybe you do your own things a lot more than you normally did. Maybe you sleep in separate beds. I mean, what are you going to be doing if you're fifty-five and you're single? Oh, yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Like, well, it's just it's just age. Mm. It's age. It's it's a, it's an age that you get to and your life just slows down. Your life doesn't become that, that well, crazy. Well, I think there would be not- some people out there that are 55 and single and froth in life. Yeah, and there'd be fi- a lot of people out there that are 55 and married that are froth in life also yeah, with kids yeah. and grandkids and love but their it's partner. Like a, it's like a different... I think I think what those, those rom-com movies perceive is that two people get together, you know, and they live happily ever after and at the very end... They're like, their sparks are flying and it's all beautiful and lovely and all this sort of stuff. And people think that, oh, I just want to have that, you know? And it's like, yeah, sure, you can definitely have that. But that's like one stage, you know? And like exactly what you just said, as their relationship develops, you're never going to have that. But what you will have is hanging with your best mate and it's- Yeah, that's right. So- awesome and you got- Kids and all that sort of thing. Yeah, and you never know that you might you might have that. You know, the notebook the notebook might happen. I, I don't think. That well, I, I know I'm going to get with Rachel McAdams at some point <laughs> yeah, in my life, that's good. and Ryan Gosling. That's good. <laughs> um, but I think the the biggest thing is for me. I, I don't think I definitely don't think that marriage doesn't work. I just think that there's definitely other options for people. I think you should just yeah. choose. It's like it's oh, like yeah, definitely. it's like gain straight um, gain straight marriage, um, having kids, not having kids. Yep. So having kids used to be. The norm back in the day, it used to be absolutely 100% white picket fence ha- having kids. Mm. You look at the birth rates in China, for example. So everyone's talking about the overpopulation of the planet. We're getting mm. 9 million people by 2050, whatever. 9 we're, billion, really? 9 billion by 2050. But we're also going to, there's also predictions that, and models that say that we're going to get back down to 3 billion by 2100. Really? Yeah, because China, for example, have, say, say so replacement, you know how replacement rates work? Uh, replacing no. your parents oh yeah right? so, so if oh, you're is in a, that like the China has like the one kid rule or something yeah yeah so but if you were to replace your parents in, yep. in western society say in Australia if you were to replace your parents and again don't shoot me down if I'm wrong on this I'm not, I'm not I know I'm not wrong on it but I might be a little off but <laughs> the replacement rates are 2.1 person yeah so because of obviously um, deaths from maybe like cancer before somebody has a kid yeah um, so two car, car so crashes how do you do the illnesses. point one so, so that's to take into account. So, like an arm being born. No, no. So, <laughs> so, so, um, I, on average, to have a perfect replacement rate in Australia, then you have to have two point one children per household. Yeah. Obviously, you know. So, 
because you have to take into account some of the people who will die early and not have children. So, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yep. replace, to keep the population at the same level. Yes. This is what I'm saying. Yes. So in Africa, for example, the replacement rate is huge yep. because of how much infant death, how much um, disease, how much people will die before having kids to keep their population the, the same. Uh-huh. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. Um, Africa has a replacement rate of say, whatever it is, I don't know, five or six or whatever. I'm, not, I'm really not sure. Yeah. But they're actually having more kids than that. So that's why their population is growing. China, on the other hand, have they gotten rid of, I believe, again, they've gotten rid of their one kid policy mm-hmm. because their replacement rate is 2.3 uh, pe- children per household. Yeah. So they've brought it down so much. And a lot of the Western world has also brought it down so much that it's much under replacement levels. So if you have, um, if you have two, if you have, put it this way, if you're China and you have one billion people and you have one child per person, then in one generation, you're going to have 500 million people. Yep. In two generations, you're going to have 250 million people. And in three generations, you're going to have 125 million people. Right. So, And China are at that stage where their population's dropped so much, their replacement rate, that if it stays the way that it is, and a lot of the rest of the Western world, heaps of the rest of the Western mm. world, has dropped so much that when the replacement rate hits a point that's that low, if you can, cons- if you, if it sustains, if it's sustained for two or three generations, so fifty years of replacement rates in China, then they've got infrastructure for one billion people. Yeah. Then that one billion people turns to two hundred fifty thousand, uh, two hundred fifty million. Yep. Does that make sense? Yep. So, so if we if we stay under replacement rates the way that we are at the moment, then. We're going to spike by 2050 mm. and then it's going to plummet and it's going to go back to instead of having 9 million people, instead of having 6 billion, sorry, billion, not million, mm. 6 billion like we have now, then it's going to get down to having um, next to nobody left on the planet, like mm. 2 billion people. Elon Musk said this is uh, this is the mankind's biggest um, biggest threat, biggest worry. Oh, right. So, is the, is the, um, so because you, we have all this infrastructure for... Um, we have the world set up for X amount of people, yep. and then we take that down. Uh, it just—it's not an ideal scenario. No, of it's better not. for food production. It's better for like obviously having more quality in the world. But yeah, exactly. the way that our societies are set up, well, yeah, that's right. It's—it's kind of—it's going to—it'll fuck us over a little bit. But, but, um, so the, but that used to be the norm, having all those kids going back to sex at dawn, and now it's um, it used to be the norm, and then now it's. It's not the norm. So yeah. people aren't having kids as much. Uh, I, I, that was a huge tangent. But my point that I was trying to make is we're, we've, been, um, we've been conditioned growing up to, to know that, okay, you want to get married, yeah, have, have two or three kids, settle it's down, security. live happily ever after. Yep. Uh, up until, I don't know, I, I don't know because I'm only 30, but up until 30 years ago, it was probably pretty embarrassing to have a, a child that was gay. Obviously, like gay yeah, marriage exactly, is still yeah. a gay marriage is still, and also even it, it was just weird. I'm assuming to have a a child before you were married. Well, look like, at the look like at that. look at the whole thing. Yeah, that as well. Look at the whole thing of like coming out, like coming out of the closet. People staying in the closet. Yeah, yeah. Why the fuck? Why the fuck is that even a thing? Why were they even in a closet? That's right. Exactly. So you should just be able to be who you are, oh, whatever absolutely. you are, do whatever you want. Yeah, and and that's, that's fine it. in society. But at the moment we're kind of hamstrung by these thoughts of like, this is what has to happen. This is the way you should be, whatever. Yeah. When Because it's I the think, norm. It's yeah, the that's norm. right. I think Sex at Dawn, I think the biggest takeaway from it is that do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. You know, set yeah. up set up your life. In, as long as in it's which, legal. As long as it's legal. Mm. Set up, Actually, set up. no, I don't agree with that. Because <laughs> gay marriage isn't illegal. Set, set, in, a, in, a lot of, in a lot of places, you're right. 100%. Yeah. That's totally fucked. So, yeah, that's my takeaway. It wasn't... It wasn't um, a lot of people... Like, if you think of the premise of Sex at Dawn, you'd think of, you know, it's against marriage and it's against monogamy. These guys are living, the, the, the authors live in a polygamous relationship, but they're, they're not really against either of those two things. It's, and they're just showing that yeah. society should be governed by, uh, sorry, well, just your position in society ideas. should be governed by you, yeah. not society. Yeah. Like what it's, you want to do with yourself. Though. I guess it's hard when you have to regulate a lot of people. What do you mean? Well, like, I totally agree with that. You know, everybody should be comfortable just doing what they're doing. And it's, it's your own decision. Like, if you want to, um, if, if you're a, or a chick and you want to have 20, 20 dudes and vice versa, or you, you're gay and you're straight or whatever, it's totally your decision because that's what makes you happy. But in a society, in a societal situation where you're trying to make 
everyone happy or everyone get along, all that sort of stuff. Certain things have to be cold and regulated, and that's why I guess we get social norms, well, and that's why oh, yeah. I guess these things become weird or you know different. That's why. But you shouldn't. You shouldn't. The word you use there was regulate. Yeah. You should. People shouldn't be regulated. Well, um, well, economically yeah, speaking, sh- we should. Well, how does economics come into the conversation that we're having? What do you mean? Well, With regulation, like the word regu- like regulating us how? Well, as in like, if we all have to get along, mm. so economically speaking as well, like we have to build a society and there has to be money and there has to be demand and supply, then we have to have certain things in place to do that. What's going on, babe? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> Jill's just pointing at the microwave yeah. like, is this a microwave? Economics and, uh, <laughs> I, I genuinely thought like, she was like, how does this thing work? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah well, basically sex works, Jill, when uh, you have a, a man and a woman love each other very much and they decide to, um, you know. But, um, yeah. I, Do you know I what I mean think, though? No, I don't know what you mean with the regulation thing. Like, Well, people, so, okay. So, in a society certain things have to take place. You have to build houses and you have to have bartering systems and you have to be governed and all this sort of stuff. If, if, if that wasn't in place, it'd just be fucked. Like, yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Well, if, if those things weren't in place, we, we wouldn't be sitting right here right now nah, speaking we into headsets. We'd probably, we'd probably be quite happy doing yeah, whatever well, we're exactly. doing somewhere else. Exactly. But yep. that's, what, that's what I mean. But, but I agree with most of what you said or... I think there's lots of different ways you can do the things that you just said, but yep. obviously it's very hard. We're entrenched in where we are now. Like we're not, we're not, you know, yeah, that's go right. Yeah. Thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of years back, but of technology. But, yeah. but what I mean is, um, just with the you said, you know, you have to regulate people. When you said that, I don't know what you meant by that, but what I what I'm trying to say is, I just think society has to have or should have measures in place so that the society can run well, mm. but those measures shouldn't have anything to do with anything we've been discussing. In oh, my opinion, yeah, I, I think, yeah, sexuality, uh, I, sexuality, marriage, I would agree kids. with you. I would, I would hope so as well, but I just think that because we have to have me- certain measures in place with you know growing a society and all this sort of thing, that societal norms s- stem from that. They just, they just develop that way. Yes, they and then because of pro- that, they're probably we get really shit situations like people having to come out mm. and you know things like that. Mm. That's and I don't, I don't like it. I don't. I really wish that that wasn't the case, but I guess it's just that's the way it's happened. You know. Yeah. Mm. No, that makes sense. I wonder if you have to come out in like a tribe in like the Amazon. Yeah. I wonder if I don't know, that's interesting. Yeah, I actually. If there's like little things like that. Yeah. Imagine if you have to come out being straight over there. Hey guys, I'm in the girls. Get him! Hum dum da hum dum. Shut up! Hoo ha! Shut up! Tense, 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 real. Yeah. Um, Boys, I'm straight. <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't really know. I don't really know um how that works. But well, you were born in the Amazon. Yeah, and I was born. I was born um on the other Hatsmanlufa Lamarca tribe. Hatsmanlufa. You get me every time with the hootsie. The hootsie. Yeah, the hootsie. Gives me a real the hootsie. hootsie. Too. Yeah, up the, up the hasamanal. Up the... <laughs> up the hootsamanal. Yeah. Um, oh, shit. Oh, that was good. We've got Bill Stone in um, a few minutes ago. Stoney. Yeah, we do. <laughs> shit. Should we wrap it up? Yeah, I think we should. Hey, we- just quickly, your Nationals comp's coming up. It is. What numbers are we trying to hit? Um, I'm just trying to hit one snatch, one clean and jerk at yeah. the moment. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> training's been that bad that I um, training's been that bad mm. that I'm just happy to total and cheer my mates on. Really, yeah, it's good. Look, at the end of the day, I had a chat with two of the boys, a couple of my mates down there about um about uh we had a chat about like bad training um, runs that we've had. Yep. and Kieran and Nick. We both talked about times, Nick particularly one time that it was his best competition ever and um, it was his worst training two or three months of all time. He's really? like, I didn't want to compete. Yeah, and that ha- that's happened to me both ways. You know, you train shit, you lift awesome or you yeah. you train awesome, you lift shit, you know. So, and Kieran said the same thing. So, I get that. So, I'm hoping that'll, um, I'm hoping it'll be a good result. I hope I hit six from six but... At the end of the day, I've been busy. I've been my well, preparation. What could happen on the day? My preparation's been shit, so I'm just gonna yeah. go up there and enjoy watching my mates lift yeah. and hope I can lift well myself. And if I don't, I don't. And if I do, I do. Mm. You know, so mm. so. Oh, that's good. Alrighty, alrighty. Yeah. So uh, catch you later. Yeah. <laughs> catch you later, <laughs> listeners. That's a wrap.
All righty. Thanks, uh, thanks for listening, fellows and fellowettes. Fellowettes. If you uh, mm-hmm. if you like the show, make sure you subscribe. Uh, Two. Help us, help us subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> help us subscribe, and um, yeah, help us build the show. Help us get you better guests. We're about to interview Lucas Parker, actually, who's over in Melbourne, which is great. Oh yeah. Um, so we're able to get big guests uh, like Lucas and other guys from around the, the world, like Wim Hof, because we're growing and we want to we want to keep that up. So subscribe. But the more we grow, guys. The bigger we can get and the better guess we can get. Sorry, Bill. I'm just excited. <laughs> Tell me he's excited. Yes. <laughs> um, so also, guys, head to www.adventuretravel.com forward slash podcast if you want to check anything out on the show notes. All the links are in there. And make sure you subscribe when you're on the website. Please. We're also brought to you guys by True Pride today. Head to www.truepride.com.au forward slash ADVF. Get your joining fee waived, $297. You will save on average $150 a week, so $600 a month at the cost of $97 a month with uh, the guys at True Pride. That's what they average. Uh, Carv, Carv is also a sponsor. Get your life back, get a VA, get your systems in check and relax. www.carv.ph forward slash ADVF to get 10 free hours and adventure fit travel. Boom, boom, boom. www.adventurefittravel.com. Check out what we do. That's it. That was pretty good. I was good. Yeah, I was excited. I'm happy with myself. Yeah. Is your heart rate up? Nah. What else? Uh, okay. I'm so relaxed. Yeah, it's good. I'm, I'm Cause good you, cause at Because you can calf. I'm a star. At this. <laughs> I was born for this. I'm an OG <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> motherfucker. Uh. All right. Um, that's it. See you next week.